Today we're going to be learning about measures of center. Measures of center. And measures of center are basically the summary of the set of data. So for example, I have the test scores for this school year's algebra class. These are my test scores for this year algebra class. And uh, on the report card, though, I want to I want to just give one number that summarizes the whole performance. It's very convenient to have one number because I can't include all of these test scores on the report card. So that's what the measures of center uh, does. The measures of center, they basically summarizes the data uh, and it represents the mean value of the data. So the three kinds of measures of center that we'll be discussing are going to be the mean, the median, and the mode. But before I go into these, before I go into these measures of center, I would also like to bring to your attention the minimum and the maximum. I'm sure you know what minimum and maximum mean. Minimum means the smallest data. So the smallest data in this set of data are, is uh, 86. The maximum is going to be 97. And the reason I'm putting minimum and maximum here is because each of the measures of center need to be in between the minimum and maximum. Or sometimes they could equal the minimum and maximum. But usually they're going to be in between the minimum and maximum. If you found your mean, median, and mode, and they're outside of the minimum and maximum, or if they're less than the minimum or bigger than the maximum, it means you've done something wrong in your calculation. So these are a good boundary points that you can use to make sure that your answers don't stray off into some weird number. Okay, so let's start off with finding the mean. The mean is just simply finding the average. And I'm going to be using notation here that you might not be too familiar with, but uh, it's going to be more commonly used in higher math. So to represent the data, each of these data here, or as it is called in statistics, variable, just like you use letters uh, for variables in algebra, we use letters for variables in statistics. So let's use x. So x is going to represent test scores. This is the variable that we're using, test scores. And x1 equals 90, x2 equals 93 x3 equals 90, x4 equals 97, x5 equals 86, x6 equals 90, and x7 equals 91. Okay, so I'm assigning uh, different names for the, the each of the data that we have. And the mean is usually notated as x. It's the variable that we're using for the for our data with a little bar on top. Okay, so when you see a variable with the bar on top, it means the mean of that variable. And that's going to be the summation, or the sum, of all the x's from 1 to n. n is going to be the number of data that we have. In this case, it's 7. And divide that by n. Okay, so this looks bit complicated, but it's really doing a very simple thing. It's just finding the average. You're adding up all the data on the numerator, and then you're dividing by the number of data that we have. That we're using um, n and i and x here to generalize. Okay, so the mean, let's find, let's find the mean actually here. If you add all of those up, the numerator, that's going to be 637, and you're dividing that by 7. So the mean is going to be 91. 
all right for the median you need to first rank your data ranking means to put your data in order from least to greatest or from greatest to least it's usually written from least to greatest so let's arrange our data here from least to greatest so the, the smallest number was 86 and then 90 then 90 then 90 then 91 then 93 then 97 okay so let's look at the the bottom data here since that's in order so once you've put your data in order the median is going to be the middle number so since there are seven numbers here the middle number is going to be the fourth number since this number there are three numbers on each side of that number three on this side and three on that number that's the middle number so the median is 90. That's the middle number. But for example, if we had another number here, then there's not going to be one middle number. There's going, there's going to be two middle numbers. Both 90 and 91 are going to be the middle numbers. Because then there are going to be the three numbers on this side and three numbers on that side. So when you have two middle numbers, in case, or in fact, this is going to be the case when there's an even number of data, there are going to be two middle numbers. So in this case, you need to find the average of these two numbers, the average of 90 and 91. So just add those two and then divide it by two. Okay, so but we'll just work with the case where we don't have the 100. So our median is going to be 90. And finally, the mode. Mode, I think it's the easiest to calculate because there's really no calculation involved. For the mode as well, it's, it's better if you rank your data. And it's the number that occurs the most times. So in this case, we have three 90s, but all the other numbers just come up once. So the mode is going to be 90 because that occurs the most times. Now let's say that we had 91 and another 91 in which case there are going to be two numbers that occur the most times right? both 90 and 91 occurs the same number of times in which case there are going to be two modes so both 90 and 91 are going to be the mode and the case when we have two modes is called bimodal bi means two right so we have two modes uh, it's called bimodal if you have more than two modes, so let's say we have another 97 and another 97. So there are now three modes, right? 90, 90, 90. There are three 90s, three 91s, and three 97s. But when there are really more than two modes, then we really don't uh, consider them to be modes. So we just say no mode when there are more than two modes. either more than two modes, or if all the numbers occur the same number of times. Okay, so that's what mode is. Now, one specific characteristic about modes is that you can find modes, oops, you can find modes of qualitative data as well. For median and mean, you can only find uh, quantitative data. So let's say that um, we're researching, collecting data about favorite color, and three people said they like red, four people said they like blue, two people said they like green, and three people say they like yellow. How are you going to find the average of these? You can't really find the average of colors. You can't find the average of colors. And you can't find the median of the colors because you can't really rank these. They don't have numerical value so to put them in um, increasing or decreasing order. But you can find the mode. The mode is the data that occurs the most times. And in this case, it's going to be uh, the blue. Blue occurs four times. So the mode of that would be 
blue, but you can't really find mean and median. So mode also works for non-quantitative data or for qualitative data. And you might be wondering why are there both mean and median? They both seem to be doing the same thing. They both seem to find to be finding the middle-ish numbers. I mean, although they are not really equal, for mean you got 91, for median you got 90, they both seem to be the same thing. Why do we need to find both of them? And to answer that question, um, they actually show, or mean and median, even though they, they, the way you calculate them seem to be similar, there are actually very different types of data. To be more specific, mean is very flexible. Mean is very flexible and uh, median is not very flexible. Okay, and what I mean by flexible is that, let me actually erase the minimum and maximum for a second here. We have some cases called outliers. What are outliers? So if you look at our data up here, this student seemed to be a fairly good student. Um, he or she is uh, getting high Bs or uh, mid A's on most of the tests. But let's say that the student had a really bad day one day and just bombed the test and got a 30% on the test. Now, this data right here, the 30% on the test is clearly very different outside of this range right here. This seemed to be very different from the rest of the data. And this is what's called the outlier. The outliers are data that are there, but they don't really seem to fit with the rest of the data. And the causes of outliers could be, like I said previously, a really bad day, and the student um, had just had a terrible, terrible uh, sleep the day before and just couldn't perform well on the test. So they just bombed the test and getting a 30% there. So in some cases, it's not really fair to include the outliers. In, inside the data. And when you include the outlier here, the mean gets affected very much. So for example, if I include the 30 here, the mean is going to change from 91. So it's going to be 667 divided by 8 now, right? That's going to give us an 83% the mean just drops by eight points just because of that one outlier. And the mean changed from 91 to 83. But if you look at the median, the median is still going to be the same. The middle number are going to be these two numbers right here. Right? There are three numbers on this side and three numbers on that side. And the average of 90 and 90 is still 90. So the median stays the same. So that's why I'm saying that it's not really flexible. It doesn't get affected by outliers that much. So the median doesn't get affected that much, but the mean is very flexible. And it just changes a lot with uh, the outlier. So even though mean and median, they seem to be showing this similar data, they're actually affected very differently from the data and especially with the outliers. Okay, so uh, just be familiar with finding all three of these, mean, median, and mode, and what each of them do, or how each of them represents the data that we have.